So, what does it look like like in super duper real life for reals? Well, here we go. We've got some great examples to look at here. Uh, let's just take this first guy. We've got a polynomial function, and we've got we're looking at when x approaches three. That means anywhere we see x, we put a three in for that x. So my problem becomes uh, three squared times 2 minus 3. Now, this we can do. This is not hard math here. 3 squared is 9. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So the limit, as we do all this, is going to be negative 9. Okay, and we can do that on all of these guys. So what about part uh, examples x approaches to? Well, let's look at the next guy. We'll do them in red. So what we're, we're going to do is we're going to look at 2, because everywhere we see an x, we're going to put a 2 in, squared plus 2 times 2 plus 4, all of that over 2 plus 2. And when you work all of this out, you're going to end up with, on top, 4 plus 4 plus 4 over 4. And so what is that going to be? 12 over 4, which is 3. Okay. Again, don't let that be super hard. Don't let that be support. Now, what about the next guy? The limit as x approaches 0 of tan x over x. Well, now we got to go back to some trig. Remember that tangent x is the same thing as sine x over cosine x. And so what we can do is we can look at this problem as the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x times tangent x, okay, and 1 over x times tangent x is the same thing as 1 over x times sine x that's a really nasty cosine. Let me clean that up just a little bit. Okay, now we substitute in zeros at every chance that we get. And so uh, when we look at this, we go 1 over 0 times sine 0 over cosine 0. But wait, we have a problem, not theta 0. The problem is this. The problem is we have 1 divided by 0. So if you'll notice, this guy right here throws this whole problem out of whack. So what we're going to do is we're going to erase this part, and we're going to rewrite it in a little bit different way. We're going to say that this represents sine x over x times 1 over cosine x. Now, one of the things that... Um, I'm going to tell you that you're going to take on faith at this point in time is that the limit, the limit as x approaches 0 of this, okay, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is 1. So what I've got is 1 times 1. 1 over 1. And so this guy actually equals 1. Now this is a this is a tricky problem. So pay attention or not pay attention or rewind and watch again or ask uh, or Google uh, this question because it's a little bit it's just a little bit different. Okay? On the last question, um, what we can do is we can factor out the top. Now you may not remember this, but it factors as x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1. Uh, and then on the bottom, it factors to x minus 2. 
So what we want to do is look and see, is there a way that we can put a 2 into the bottom? Because if you'll notice right off the bat, if I put a 2 in down here, I get 0. And we cannot have a 0 in the denominator. So do this. I'll graph it right now. And while I'm graphing it, you check it out. okay? And you'll notice on my graph that as we get close to 2, something really interesting happens. The graph appears to have a vertical asymptote. And on the right side, it's going up. And on the left side, it's going down. So in this case, our limit does not exist. So we would just say does not exist. Or we would say d n e. Okay, so here's like real life applications of using all the different properties of limits. Um, don't let this be super challenging. It's not. Just substitute in whatever value you're approaching. Okay?